Welcome to the Sports Watchdog Radio Show, hosted by Mason Kern. He keeps his nose to the ground to report on what's trending in professional and college sports, to inform, enlighten, and entertain. And now it's... The Sports Watchdog! The Sports Watchdog, Mason Kern. Hey everyone, welcome to the Sports Watchdog Radio Show on NBC Sports Radio AM 1060 Phoenix. As always, I'm your host Mason Kern here with you every Sunday and yeah, it's that time again. I got some great stuff for you including exclusive interviews with Justin Peck, the off-road racing champion, as well as David McLean, the founder and, and beloved wrestling icon, but, but the founder of WOW, which is Women of Wrestling. So be sure to stay tuned for those awesome interviews. It's going to be going to be really cool to have them on the show. And also, as always, we have the interesting happenings on the hardwood for you basketball-specific fans. So got a lot to unpack in this show. All right, guys, we're going to start the show off, as always, in sports hot topics, what is hot in sports of all platforms around the nation and beyond. And on this edition, we're going to take you to Australia for the Australian Open featuring some tennis as some pretty big stuff has gone down in the tournament, um, mainly for the for the women's bracket of the Australian Open in tennis, the defending champion Caroline Wozniacki was knocked out of the 2019 Australian Open by Maria Sharapova in a three-set epic match on Friday. The Russian star prevailed 6-4, 4-6, 6-3 in just over two hours of purely supreme tennis on Rod Lavar Arena. Now, meanwhile, Roger Federer, the men's defending champion, just eased to a 6-2, 7-5, 6-2 victory over America's Taylor Fritz. And these, so, so you have the men's side, one defending champion in Federer who is moving on. But kind of surprisingly, kind of expectedly, uh, Wozniacki knocked out by Maria Sharapova. And uh, this, this whole tournament, I mean, you're getting Serena Williams again on the women's side um, who, who, I mean, in one of her last tournaments, I mean, she was pregnant and won it. So, so definitely an inspiration, um, Serena Williams. But for the men's side, Rafael Nadal, Andy Murray, as I reported uh, last week, who, who's set to retire later this year, not after the Australian Open, but but most likely after Wimbledon, um, Andy Murray will be calling it quits, and the big four will will kind of turn into the big three, as like I said, I reported last week. But in the women's singles, uh, you got Sloane Stevens, who the fifth seed, Angelique Kerber, the two seed, all all skating to victories, and. The Australian Open, just as a whole, definitely some exciting tennis, some big names. So if you haven't been paying attention, let me put you on notice, and you can do so now. <laughs> All right, everyone, the Sports Watchdown Radio Show will be right back after this quick break, so don't go away. We'll return after these quick messages. If you're losing your hair or notice that it's getting thinner, listen closely. You can do something about it without messy lotions or drugs. Now you can get clinically proven hair growth results at home with the HairMax Laser. HairMax delivers nourishing laser light energy to stimulate hair growth right at the roots. It's FDA cleared, recommended by doctors, and best of all, it has an amazing 93% success rate in clinical studies in both men and women, so you can be sure it works. Use it just three times a week and experience new hair growth, increased density, and healthier, fuller, more attractive hair in just weeks with a five-month money-back guarantee. Now, for a limited time, save 15% on your HairMax order at HairMax.com. Type in code RADIO at checkout or call 1-800-9-REGROW. That's HairMax.com code RADIO or 1-800-9-REGROW. Experience real hair growth and save 15% with HairMax. Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the Sports Watchdog Radio Show on NBC Sports Radio AM 1060 Phoenix. I'm your host, Mason Kern, and joining us now is Justin Peck, the champion off-road driver, owner of Race Pro Tech Racing Team, mental health ambassador, and the author of Bulletproof. 
Justin has more than 200 trophies and awards for winning races in every form of motorsports he's competed in. He's back-to-back -back series champion in off-road motorcycles, the Challenge of America Series national winner, USRA Series champion, and UKC multi-time series champion. But Justin's life has not always been easy, so he's here to share more info into the hardships of mental health as a whole, as well as his racing career endeavors. So with that, hey Justin, welcome to the Sports Watchdog Radio Show. So glad you could be here today. Thanks, Mason. I appreciate being on, man. Yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time. So before I get anything into anything too, too serious here, I just want to know how you kind of got into this crazy world of motorsports and off-road racing, and then kind of how that led you to become the owner of the Race Pro Tech race team. Well, the racing thing, I mean, it's, it's always been in my blood for sure. I mean, I, so growing up, um, a lot of my memories was being on dirt bikes with my dad. And so uh, through that process, yeah, I, I just learned the love of speed. And, and then when I got married, you know, I had me, um, had enough money to buy my own dirt bike, and that was pretty much all she rode. So bought the first dirt bike, um, entered my first race within probably about a month after that, and I've been racing ever since. Yeah, definitely. I mean, pretty pretty cool to get into motorsports. And, and, I mean, you mentioned kind of the speed, the adrenaline, the thrill of it. Just, can you kind of just describe the feeling that you get when you're behind the wheel of your truck on the track going to, like, super high speeds through the dirt? What, what kind of feeling do you get in those moments? Well, so, like, in the trophy truck, um, which is, you know, one of the things that I drive, uh, it, the best way to explain it to people is it's like being in a paint shaker for nine hours. <laughs> um, it rattles your brain. Like, it, it it's it's one of those things that it's amazing. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's probably the best sport in the world, you know, in my opinion, but it's a, uh, it's a rush. It's uh, you know, I mean, we're doing crazy speeds and uh, there's a lot of focus and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of risk that's going on. But at the end of the day, I mean, the, the whole focus is, is the win. And so all of the, the risk um, kind of is set on the shelf and we go for the reward for the win, and, and, you know, if we crash or if we break, I mean, it just happens, it's racing, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of how I got started into it and, and why my love is for what it is. Right, yeah, and I mean, throughout your, your kind of racing career, like I mentioned, racking up uh, a good amount of accolades, so is there is there one moment in particular or one race that, that comes to your mind when you kind of look at your career that, that was one of your favorites? Yeah, there. I mean, I have a few, um, but the one that just and it's it's silly because it there was no championship behind it, there was no uh, special award behind it or anything. It was just one of those races where everything that between my mind and the body and you know how my hands reacted on the steering wheel and my feet reacted on the pedals, just everything was perfection. So it was at um, it was at the uh, super national event in Las Vegas uh, probably three or four years ago, and I hadn't done very well, and so I made it to um, I had to compete in a class called the Last Chance Qualifier. So it's basically they only let 40 cars race. There were 90 something of us that entered, and wow. so I had I had one shot um, to. I had one more race, and I had to place within the top six out of 60 cars to qualify into, into like, Super Sunday, the main event. And I hadn't been in the LCQ forever. I mean, that's just something that just didn't, didn't happen. And so I get into the LCQ, and I was nervous because, I mean, this had, I had a possibility of not actually making the main show, and I, I've never not made the main show. And so we – get everything dialed in and I get into the car and my tuner just literally like five minutes before the race um, starts, he walks over to me and, and he kind of whispers to me, he's like, all right, dude, I put these special set of rain tires on for you. So, and that's one thing I didn't mention is that it rained. And so the track, it was on asphalt. And so it was super slippery right. and all sorts of just crazy stuff. Right. So he walks up to me and says, look, hey, man, I put on these special set of rain tires for you. I'm like, oh, all right. He goes, you're going to go really, really fast. Okay. <laughs> so 
Well, I, it's it's just so funny because it's it, it, the the racing side of things, and it goes along with like life in general. A lot of it's just a mental just a mental mind screw, I guess. Right. Because we overthink things so often, and because we do this, we self sabotage ourselves. And so, with my tuner saying, "Hey, man, like these are the best set of tires that you can do. You're going to be faster than everybody." Well, I I lapped clear up to like tenth place. So I, I didn't, I didn't win anything for it. Like I won the race. I mean, I, I, I did that, but I didn't get a trophy for it and I didn't get any special appreciation for it. But I remember that just profession. It was just the focus was there and it was, I was just in the zone. That makes sense. I, I'm sure it makes sense to you because you, you, know, you get to talk to a lot of sports people. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, being in the zone definitely helps and having everything, kind of go right for you in that moment, even though there was no, like you said, championship behind it or anything. I mean, I'm sure, yeah, that was that must have been a great feeling. And, I mean, like I said, having so much success throughout your career, it wasn't, it hasn't really always been easy for you, though. And and I know that, that as a mental health ambassador, um, can you just kind of speak about just targeting, and I mean, you even mentioned it in, in that last story, just about having mental focus and how everything's kind of like a mental mind screw. I mean, you even wrote a memoir titled Bulletproof, like I mentioned before, and that kind of catalogs your journey battling mental health and, and suicide and, and all these other things. So did writing this kind of kind of help you in your, your own struggle and process, being able to help other people, or was it, was it kind of tough for you to put yourself back in, kind of into that mind frame? It's kind of a weird explanation of how I how I think how I try to explain this, but you know when you're when you're 15 to let's say even 25, between that age range, yeah, you're you're sort of a grown up, sort of, but you're still a kid, and we never really understand the perceptions or the mindset of our parents, and so my goal was was to be able to write the book in my words at the age of 40 or 42. And then when they were my age, they would be able to read it and maybe it would resonate with them just a little bit better. And that honestly was the sole purpose for this whole thing was to to write it for them. So when they got older and if they were struggling, they could read about, you know, hey, dad did this, and dad did that, and it was good. Well, it ended up turning into a little bit more than that, which, you know, kind of surprised me, but um, send it and the editor loved it and she said that it needed to be a book and I said ah you know I don't know and and ended up publishing it myself and you know it's been good because I've met a lot of amazing people and I've been able to experience a lot of really really amazing things right and you know it's I'm still young and I still race hard and I still like to talk to people so I think if I have those three qualities in play, I'll still be around and I'll still be doing my thing. Yeah, like I said, definitely really inspiring. One, that you're able to kind of combat your own struggles, help other people, and that you're so still passionate about your sport and obviously retaining so much success still at the highest level of your sport. Well, Justin, really great talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Where can our listeners go to get more info or just to connect with you? So you can reach me on my website, um, and that gives more information about the book. And we have blogs and uh, just just kind of basic information on uh, on mental health. And that's at justinpet.com. Uh, social media tags are all justinpet49. Uh, you can get the book on Amazon. And uh, yeah, well, definitely that's about it. That's me. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Justin. All right, everyone, the Sports Watchdog Radio Show on NBC Sports Radio AM 1060. We'll be right back after this quick break. If you have a lot of devices that are always power hungry, get the Charge Hub Power Station 360 Surge Protector Power Strip from LimitlessInnovations.com. It's the most efficient charging station on the market today. It features quick and convenient charging for up to 10 devices simultaneously. That's juice for 10 devices all at once. The Charge Hub 360 is also designed with a safety power surge to protect all gadgets and devices while providing optimal charge. Find it at LimitlessInnovations.com. 
Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Watchdog Radio Show on NBC Sports Radio AM 1060 Phoenix. I'm your host, Mason Kern, and joining us now is David McClain, the wrestling icon and beloved producer, ringside commentator, and matchmaker of WOW, Women of Wrestling. WOW is the first promotion to put the focus solely on female wrestlers in all aspects, from storytelling and marketing to the wrestling ring itself, and is the perfect complement to a modern era where female athletes are honored and respected like never before. Interest in female wrestling has increased in recent years, and McLean's brainchild is getting its season started now. So with that, hey David, welcome to the Sports Watchdog Radio Show. So glad you could join us today. Mason, thank you. What an amazing weekend it's been. I tell you, we set the world on fire Friday night. We have changed the paradigm of professional wrestling. The tweets, the texting, the Instagrams, thank you all to the fans. It's just been tremendous. Yeah, definitely really exciting to get your season kicked off this weekend. So before I really get into just this season in general, I want to know, David, what first got you interested in wrestling and entertainment in the first place? Watching it on TV as a kid with my brothers. Just fell in love with the spec- the spectacle of it and um, was able to go to my first wrestling matches when I was about 13 years old. And I got to, by total accident, take pictures meet the star of the day. His name was Dick the Bruiser. And I was able to start working for him at a young age, became the broadcast announcer by the time I was a freshman in college at IU. And I saw that women's wrestling was just not being treated well. And I would see the matches that women would put on. And I couldn't understand how come they weren't deservant of the same respect. And I asked, why can't we, you know, do an all-women's league or bring women's – and not an all-women's league at that time. I was asking about promoting women's wrestling within our live events in the Midwest. And I was told no one would be interested and no one would care, and they're designed as the popcorn match, you know, put on before the main event so everyone can go get their refreshments and be back for the main event. And I just didn't agree with that. And I started GLOW, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, which many of your listeners know from Netflix now. Right. And this this last weekend, Friday, was a culmination of a dream to put women on the center stage of professional wrestling where they deserve to be. And it happened, and it's every Friday night. So this coming Friday night, for your listeners that did not see it last Friday, Make sure you tune in. Access TV, Friday nights, 9 o'clock, follows New Japan Wrestling, and it's before their uh, MMA and their boxing. Friday nights, the one-spot destination on Access TV, if you like MMA, boxing, or wrestling. And I tell you, it's just so exciting to see the response to the only all-women's broadcast for an hour of women's wrestling. It's just incredible. Yeah, definitely. So, I think it's a great idea that you decided to kind of kind of spearhead this this whole idea of women's wrestling. I mean, like you said, starting off with GLOW and now coming up with WOW. So so how are you able to just kind of, uh, despite all of maybe the, the, the backlash or the, the hardships of trying to create this, this whole new kind of medium of sports, how did you, one, come up with the idea for WOW and the name and all and everything that goes along with that? And how did you just kind of spearhead that movement and stick with it to get it to where it is now, obviously having so much success this past weekend? Well, the name, interestingly enough, I had thought of at the same time I had thought of GLOW. So that was easy. Um, and... When I sold Glow, I sold it after its second year in syndication. I knew I would always come back to wrestling because my thirst wasn't quenched with Glow. (laughs) It was sliding into a comedy direction, and I wanted to present the female wrestlers as more athletes and and, and, and focus on their in-ring activity. Right. So subsequently – I always knew I would come back to wrestling, always, because I had not done what I had set out to do. And we did put WOW on in 2000. We were derailed after 9-11. The ad market went into the tank after, you know, the events of 9-11. And 
it was my business partner, Jeannie Buss, who owns the Los Angeles Lakers, three years ago told me, let's bring Wild back. The timing is right. And oh, so right was she. Because at that point, we started to do some live events in Vegas. Um, and test walk, test the marketplace, and we went out to wrestling fans and asked them, because there's, there's, there's so much wrestling when you consider digital now. I mean, it's everywhere. Right. And every league has some sort of women's wrestling, so it's no longer new or fresh. So we asked, what can we do to bring an alternative wrestling program of WOW to the marketplace and deliver what you, the fans, want? And we went state to state and asked fans that. And we found out that they were thirsting for a new wrestling program that put the fun, F-U-N, back into wrestling. And a program that put the spotlight on women and showcased them in a full one-hour program. And they also wanted to see, in line with the fun, something that mom, dad, and the kids could watch again as a family. And so they wanted a family wrestling program that was fun, that showcased the women athletically. And we've delivered that as evidence of this weekend's broadcast on Access TV. Right. So um, we're delivering the best in the industry. We've mixed our own wild homegrown superheroes with those of the independent wrestling circuit. And we've got the best talent. And what Tessa Blanchard did this past week on, on WOW to Santana Garrett's dad, uh, it was despicable at the time. And we're going to find out, you know, this coming Friday, Tessa's going to debut in her first wrestling match on WOW this coming Friday night on Access TV. Yeah, definitely an, an exciting time for WOW and, and all the fans as well. So then you say, I mean, Jeannie, uh, Jeannie Bus approaches you, says, "Now's the time," and it, uh, it obviously was. What do you attribute then to that? To why the time was right? To the growing popularity of women's wrestling that that is making Wow so successful right now. Well, at that time, um, WWE had not shifted its direction yet to from from lingerie and and less less than. Uh, appropriate women's wrestling. It was still the their popcorn match. I mean, they even had a pay per view where they only wrestled for about one minute. Wow. I think that that was the shifting turn for them because the fans were so upset that that happened at a pay per view event that they had to shift. They were directed to by their fans. But at that time, Ronda Rousey had, had broken new ground. Women's soccer had broken new ground. Um, Wonder Woman you know, which is what inspired Jeannie Buss. She was fortunate enough to be a young lady at the age of nine, eight, ten years old, and her dad told her, here, I've got a gift for you. And he gave her Wonder Woman comic books and Supergirl, and he told her, you can be anything you want to be. You're not limited by anything. So whatever your imagination dreams up, you can do. So Dr. Buss empowered his daughter, uh, when she was nine, eight, ten years old, and that empowerment we're the benefactors of with a new, brand new women's wrestling program that empowers women to get into that ring and perform and shine like never before. So, all those things into the blender. Um, you know, Marvel Comics had come out with its own all women's uh, superhero comic book at the time. All those things were going into the blender right. at the time that we said, let's do this. And it just so happens it's taken us three years of getting the brand correctly. The kinks worked out, the social media platforms built out, the website built out. It all takes time to do it right. Because I wasn't interested in bringing back women's wrestling if we didn't do it right. Right. And now we've done it right, and we've got the right partners. And Mark Burnett, hats go off to him, his president, Andrew Simon of Access TV. They came and said, let's put WOW on right after New Japan Wrestling and let us showcase your property. So what a be no better partner because they have a passion for it. They have a passion for wrestling. Everyone knows Mark Cuban's been involved in it before, 
in his arena that he owns uh, showcases the live men's wrestling matches. So we've got someone that's engaged on a network level that's passionate about what we're doing, and you can't buy passion. Right, exactly, and I definitely think, I mean, the steps are in the right direction for the continued success of WOW, and and I just want to know, considering, I mean, you didn't get the outcome you wanted with GLOW, now you get this kind of second opportunity doing what you love back in wrestling with WOW, what is your overall goal, and what do you want to kind of achieve with this program? The goal eventually with Access TV, and we're, we're easily a year off from this, right. easily. If, if not longer, is to do live WOW broadcast from venues across the country. That's the ultimate goal. Right now, um, we shoot in Los Angeles exclusively at the Belasco Theater. Uh, our next events, I believe, are in April. And um, my ultimate goal is to see WOW merchandise across the country. And we have a um, live event VIP event experience for the fans of WOW just happening vis-a-vis the first weekend success airing on Access TV where we're going to be offering fans an opportunity to come to LA and have a VIP experience with their favorite WOW superheroes and that's all in the works right now. And definitely with that first episode and airing this weekend's success, on the right track for sure. David, thank you so much for your time. Where can our listeners go to get more info, to connect with you, and what channel can they find next week's episode? Well, obviously, WOWE, as in entertainment, WOWE.com is our website, and all the social media platforms to connect with myself and the WOW superheroes is the platform's name backslash WOW Superheroes. So we're very, very easy to connect with because, um, you know, obviously it, it's WOW Superheroes on anything. Just hashtag right. WOW Superheroes or put in at WOW Superheroes. Well, definitely, everyone make sure to go check out the social media and, and be sure to tune in for the rest of the season. All right, everyone, the Sports Watchdog Radio Show on NBC Sports Radio AM 1060. We'll be right back after this. For singers looking for a fun, all-in-one wireless karaoke mic with a built-in mixer speaker and its own light show, Voco Pro's pop-up Oki microphone is for you. It connects to a smartphone or tablet via Bluetooth and accesses YouTube and numerous karaoke apps for hours of entertainment. An onboard MP3 player allows singers to perform recorded MP3 tracks. Its multicolored LED light with on-off switch will automatically dance to the beat of the music, adding visual excitement to any karaoke session. Find it at VocoPro.com. You ready to hoop it up? This is Happenings on the Hardwood. Boom! Let's go, guys. As always, at the end of the Sports Watchdog Radio Show here on NBC Sports Radio AM 1060 Phoenix. It's your favorite segment. You know it's my favorite segment, at least. It's Happenings on the Hardwood. I'm taking you around the hardwood, the court. We're pivoting on over to basketball. Now, this week is kind of the biggest news coming out of the NBA. Kyrie Irving, what uh, he hit a dagger in in the Celtics upset. I don't know if it's technically considered an upset, but one of their one of their victories this past week. I mean, just just walked up, set a screen, didn't even need it, pulled up from deep dagger. But after that game, it was very interesting because he answered a reporter's question, um, kind of talking about how he kind of understands where LeBron James was coming from back when he was in, in Cleveland and Kyrie was in Cleveland um, when they won that championship over Golden State, obviously when, when the Warriors blew a 3-1 lead, as it has been famously memed. But Kyrie Irving comes out and says, hey, I understand what he was trying to do. Um, this whole being a leader thing is is hard, and I'm obviously paraphrasing here. But, I mean, basically saying, and then telling people that he, he called LeBron to apologize just for, for being in that, putting LeBron in that position as a young kid um, at 22 years old, trying uh, and, and, quote, wanting everything at my fingertips. Um, that's what Kyrie said about the situation. So he called LeBron reportedly and, and told him basically just apologizing, um, for, for, for wanting everything for himself and kind of being selfish and not truly understand, understanding what LeBron was trying to do in Cleveland. And 
when they actually succeeded, obviously winning that championship, Kyrie definitely, I th- I think at least, um, has come to appreciate what that season was um, and how hard that was for LeBron to do, um, taking that group through the playoffs to the finals and then beating um, a 73-9 and Golden State Warriors team, one of the most historic teams probably of all time. Um, but, but so Kyrie, like I said, coming out. And then Stephen A. Smith goes on first take and says, you know what, I think this sets the stage for Kyrie to the Lakers. It's going to be a reunion of Kyrie and LeBron in L.A. in Hollywood under the bright lights. And whether or not these claims by Stephen A. are founded, I mean, so much of what, I mean, he says is is outlandish, I would say. Definitely interesting to see how the rest of this season plays out and, and what free agent moves will happen as we move into the playoffs and beyond. Well, that's a wrap, everyone. Anybody wanting to connect with me, the Sports Watchdog, on Twitter can do so at a Sports Watchdog, and on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube as well at the Sports Watchdog. So until next time, keep your eye on the ball. The Sports Watchdog. The Sports Watchdog, Ace and Kern.